on the vlog again. Just can't wait to do a vlog again. The life I love is making vlogs for my friends. And I can't wait to do a vlog again. Doing a vlog again. Going places that I've never been. Seeing things that I may never see again. And I can't wait to do a vlog again. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Top Vloggers. As always, I am High and Mighty Joe and we have another great vlog for you today. We are going to go see the grave of Phyllis Davis. It should be fun and exciting. So let's get going. Also, we need to stop at the 99 cent store and see if we can get her some flowers. Or Gotta love the mountains. They are beautiful. These are the flowers I got her. We'll see if they have a spot to put them at her gravesite. Today's adventure brings us to the Palm Mortuary Cemetery right here on Boulder Highway. Now let's go find Phyllis. Well, I believe she's buried right in through here. As soon as I find it, I will definitely let you know. Well, we are finally here at the grave of Phyllis Davis, and we have been searching for a long time to for places to go see and things to do while we were here in Nevada, and we decided to continuously look around for things and we found out that Phyllis David had has had Phyllis Davis had passed away. So we decided that it would be nice to be able to come out and visit her. Now Phyllis Davis, who has acted in films and televisions from the 1960s all the way into the early 1990s, so some of you may actually remember a lot of her uh, work. She did pass away, and we found out that she was buried here in Henderson, Nevada, which is where we are right now. Now, I guess what was most puzzling to me is that I, had n I did not even know this. It didn't seem like it was in Variety or any of the other acting publications that I had ever seen. And so I did not even know about it until we got here and I looked it up. Perhaps the lack of acknowledgement could be due to the Davis and her family not wanting to prepare a public statement concerning her death. Which I definitely understand because with the passing of a family member uh, it is definitely complicated and emotional and it can be very, very hard. So I can definitely understand why they did not want to do that. However, as an actress, Phyllis Davis did do some wonderful things in the realm of television and movies. And I think it deserves a little acknowledgement. So that's why we are here today. She was a great actress capable of comedy and drama, as well as playing villains and sympathetic parts. I think it is unfortunate that Variety and The Hollywood Reporter, the publications who purported to represent the industry that she worked in for over a quarter of a century, to have not paid her the proper respect that she deserved when she passed away. Phyllis Davis died of cancer on September 27, 2013, right here in Henderson, Nevada. She was 73 years old. Now she was born Phyllis Ann Davis on July 17, 1940, but she was billed sometimes as Phyllis Elizabeth Davis in honor of her 
idol, Elizabeth Taylor. Now, Phyllis Davis always wanted to be an actress. However, her parents owned a mortuary business in Texas where she grew up. She has two younger brothers, and both of them apparently followed in their parents' footsteps and became morticians as well. But as I said earlier, Davis had always aspired to be an actress from an early age and studied acting at the Lamar College in Beaumont, Texas for one semester before dropping out and moving to Los Angeles to study at the Pasadena Playhouse. After a brief uh, career as a flight attendant uh, for Continental Airlines, Davis' uh, business career began after her roommate, choreographer Tony Basil, or Basil, sorry if I mispronounced your name, helped her land appearances in theatrical variety shows as well as some small roles in feature films. Davis's big screen appearances throughout the 1960s included parts in Lord Love a Duck, The Oscar, The Last of Secret Agents, Spin Out, The Swinger, Live a Little, Love a Little, and my personal favorite, The Big Bounce. Not only was she in several movies, but she was also appeared in numerous guest roles on popular television shows like Petticoat Junction, The Wild Wild West, Adam 12, my personal favorite, The Beverly Hillbillies. I remember that. That was, that was awesome. I love that one. And so many more. So she has done a lot of great things in her acting career and she definitely deserves to be remembered for being a great actress and a wonderful human being. Phyllis, I brought you some flowers. I figured you would enjoy them. Just lay them there for now. They're very pretty. I'll put them up before I leave. You are a great actress. I hope everyone understands just how great of an actress you really were. You won't be forgotten in my eyes. Thank you for the memories. Now Davis's career prospect actually took a turn for the better when she landed a major role in Russ Meyer's Beyond the Valley of the Dolls in 1970, playing fashion editor Susan Lake, a role that was originally meant to be a continuation of the Ann Welps role played by Barbara Perkins in the original Valley of the Dolls in 1967. Despite her disappointment that the role had been modified beyond the Valley of the Dolls, it also allowed Davis an opportunity to play a mature and intelligent character that she was not always given an opportunity uh, to essay in her earlier uh, decorative parts uh, in the 1960s. Uh, during this time, Davis also landed a recurring role as one of the uh, repertoire of actors used in blackout uh, sections of the popular low American style anthology sitcom. She was in 38 caliber kittens and sweet sugar which is so good that one would think that it should have been nominated for some kind of award that is definitely for sure because it is a great great film and I don't understand how it didn't get nominated for an award that's for sure. Uh, instead the uh, nomination would go to the Jill St. John Plenty O'Toole role in Diamonds Are Forever and that was a just it was a terrible role and it was a terrible acting and I just it was not good so just shows that even Hollywood back then did not know exactly who should get the uh, the award because obviously they handed them out to the wrong people back then as well as they still do today.
Now, Davis continued in the woman in prison genre uh, the next year with the futuristic drama Terminal Island, which personally I think is one of the best films uh, I've ever seen her in. I, I love that film. Um, and it was directed by Stephanie Rothman. And in Terminal Island, Davis plays one of four female prisoners condemned to live out her existence on an island. Now I could go on forever and telling you about Phyllis Davis. Uh, Phyllis Davis was never married, but she was in a long time relationship with legendary actor and entertainer Dean Martin in the late 1970s. Martin's daughter Deanne wrote uh, warmly about Davis in her 2010 memoir. Memories are made of this, Dean Martin through his daughter's eyes. On May 15, 2012, Davis shared that her retirement years and her post-acting life were filled with extensive travel where she lived in countries like Thailand for periods of time, as well as fostering and finding forever homes for animals. As she explained on air, I enjoyed my life being away from acting, I think better than acting, Afterwards, I don't know. I think I grew as a person because I went to Asia by myself and went up into the jungle by myself and learned about other people. Instead of thinking about just yourself. Goodbye, Phyllis. Well, that's going to do it for us here today. I could go on forever about how great Phyllis was. It, she was a great actress, and she did so many other things. She was in Beverly Hills Cop 3. I mean, I, like I said, the list goes on. I, I could I'd be here all day telling you about her, um, and probably part of tomorrow as well. Uh, she ended up passing away of cancer here in Henderson, Nevada, and she is buried just a few steps away from from where I am right now and I want you guys to know how great of an actress she was and with that being said here is the lovely cat to tell you about today's help link today's help link is don't be a monster don't be a monster is a nationally recognized nonprofit organization that works alongside haunted attractions to provide free bullying prevention assemblies to schools across the US their mission is to educate and empower youth to stand up for themselves and their peers by building a community where everyone is included no matter their differences because no child should ever be bullied or picked on regardless of their race their religion their whatever their differences might be it's uncalled for so don't forget to share this link with your family and friends donate if you can and remember that bullying stops with you. So thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. I hope you guys had a great time. And at the end of the day, I think, I hope that you learned a little something. And that's going to do it for us here today. Thank you always for watching. We'll see you next time. Top Vloggers!